Hello, everyone. I see some teammates joining, which is great. We'll get started in about five minutes. Again, this is the advanced G Suite, so a little bit deeper dive into Gmail and Calendar. See you guys coming in. If you could for me, again, the same protocol as yesterday. We're using the webinar platform. Just make sure you can find the questions here. So type questions here where that is. And also raising your hand. Just make sure you know where that is. So raising your hand. I see people doing it. Thanks, Marty, Warren. Great. Raising your hand, everyone's raising their hand, so I know you found that. Just type hi into the questions if you want, or tell me how your day's going. Anything exciting happened today? What's going on? Or what's the weather like in your area? Um, you know, just let me know that you're out there and you can you can hear me. Hi, Jim. Great, Christian. Glad you can hear me. So everything's working well. Hopefully we won't lose power like we did yesterday. One of the sessions, all of a sudden, everything went black and the power went out, but I was able to get right back on. So, hi, Warren. Great. Yep, I'm in Chi-Town too. I'm right outside. So where are you, Roberta? I'm right outside um, in Elgin, Illinois. Actually, I think the weather said maybe some snow showers. Westchester, I know Elgin very well. Nice. Hello, James. Yeah, we might even get some snow showers, which I don't want to talk about that yet. Burbank, California. Nice. Yeah, our headquarters for SADA, who I'm with, is um, in L.A. So actually, it's North Hollywood um, where we are. So I was out there a few months ago. I'll be out there in January. Couple more minutes. So we got a couple more minutes. We'll get started. Have a fun session going over a little bit more features of the Gmail and the calendar. More teammates joining, which is great. <clears throat> I do have, I hope you guys have all been able to at least check out the resource site. Um, we'll talk about that again today, but hopefully you were able to check it out, see what's out there. The recordings are there, and I know there's been a, quite a few that have looked at the recordings from yesterday, which is great. Um, didn't have time to edit them, so I just kind of uploaded them there. So. Um, I couldn't take out some of the front and back end, but um, that makes it more fun. And you can see the real, real life, what's going on. But yeah, hopefully you're able to get on there. Um, are you guys liking the resource site? Is it helping you? Let me know in the questions. Just say, you know, let me know if, if the resource site is, is helpful so far or anything you're like, eh, I'd like to see this on it. Another minute and we'll get started. All right, it is 12.30 my time, central time. Um, so it's half past the hour. We're gonna get kick things off. Um, again, if you don't remember me, Christopher with SADA Systems, here supporting you is the enterprise consultant to help as we roll out G Suite to LAC Group. Um, so we are gonna be transitioning and going live on Monday. Um, so today's training is G Suite. A little bit deeper dive into Gmail and Calendar. 
again, how we're going to interact is raising hands, so where you can find raising hands, and also typing questions in as we go through if you have questions. So um, if you can find that, make sure you know where to raise your hand. Um, you know, that's the way we're going to interact. I'll, I'll check during the presentation and see how things are going. But again, any questions you have, please put them into the questions for me and we will we will get to those as we go through the presentation. Again, advanced G Suite for LAC Group today. We're gonna hit on Chrome, because that is the application you wanna sign into to get to your G Suite products. But I'm gonna walk you through that and tell you what that's gonna look like and feel like, because we also have the LAC portal that you're gonna be using as well. But we're gonna hit on Gmail and Calendar. Again, deeper dive into some of the functions of both of them. Keep sliding when I should be clicking. After this session, you're gonna get a survey. So I got some great feedback yesterday from the, the surveys. We'd love more feedback today. Um, you know, Surveys are great to help us enhance our product and make sure, am I doing what I need to do for you? And are you getting what you need out of training? So the end of this session, I want you to know a little bit more about STARS, um, a little bit more about KEEP, which is notes. Um, also, Google Tasks, more about that and how they work. Um, editing personal contacts, so we'll go in and look at how personal contacts can be edited, show you that. And then filters and labels. So rules in Outlook um, are now filters, and of course your labels um, are gonna be labels and sub-labels in Gmail. For calendar, we're gonna talk about working hours, so I wanna show you that again. Also, secondary calendars, how you can create a secondary calendar, how you can set up and complete reminders, um, syncing tasks from Gmail. So when you set up a task in Gmail, how it syncs to your calendar. Meets, so we're gonna talk about meets a little bit, and then also duplicating events. Resource site, again, we sent out the link. I'm gonna put the link in the chat in a minute. The resource site is chock full of information. This is where I want you to go when you have questions, you need something. You know, I, I, I get it, we wanna to talk to somebody, I wanna be able to reach out to somebody and ask that question, but you might not have that availability. So it's a great resource to go to where you can learn by tool if you need to watch a little snippet of something on how to maybe compose an email or you know, um, add, you know edit your signature, things like that. We're also gonna have on there um, signing into Chrome, and I'll show you that in a minute, the steps to signing into Chrome that you're gonna do day one with your um, LAC credentials and also the new password. What will migrate? We've talked about that yesterday, wanted to throw this in again. Again, your mail will migrate, historical mail, um, excuse me, read and unread statuses of mail. So initially 60 days of mail will be available immediately, but it could be all of it. But initially you'll look at that. You're gonna get all your mail. Everything's gonna flow into there, but initially the migration might only give you 60. We just like to put it in, the, in there as a caveat disclaimer. Um, so read and unread statuses of mail. Your signatures should migrate. If they don't, I'm gonna need you to add your signature. And we went over that yesterday, but they should migrate over. Folders, subfolders are labels and sublabels now. Attachments, anything over 25 megabytes will not. That'll go right into your drive. So if you have anything in your email that, that is that big, it's just gonna go automatically into your drive as a file. Um, priority mail denoted with stars. So all your priority mails will now have stars on them. And I'll show you stars today, how you can use them to enhance your um, Gmail account. Personal contacts and contact groups. We're gonna talk more about them. Calendar appointments will uh, migrate um, attend, um, attendees to those calendar appointments. Sub-calendars, um, they're gonna migrate over. Secondary calendars will too as well. Tasks, appointment reminders, settings will, will uh, migrate over. And also internal shared calendar permissions. So if you have permissions with somebody else in Outlook with their calendar, those will migrate over now in G Suite. Some of the icons. So I talked about up in the corner, you're gonna see a little either an initial or you're going to have a picture of yourself up in the corner, that is where you're going to know you're in your account. Remember we talked about this icon here. What did I call this icon yesterday? And what, 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 what did I call that? Put that in the questions. What did I call that? The waffle, yes, Christian, thank you, the waffle. So that is the waffle. You're gonna see that in all of your apps. That's how you can get to other apps from an existing app that you're in. Right here, we called this the, go to your settings. What did I call this? 
the donut. Yep, that is the donut. So the waffle, the donut. So I'm going to keep the food theme. The cogwheel. Yep, we did. it is called the cogwheel. Now I'm hungry. Sorry. Because now I'm going to talk about this one here, which is the search one. I'm calling that the lollipop. So we have the waffle, we have the donut, and the lollipop. We'll just keep the food theme going. Right here, these are options again. So you have your skinny snowman standing up and laying down, and you also have your carrot. These are more options. So there's more things you can do behind the scenes. Those are some of the options we're going to be hitting on today. Just wanted to go over those again. Google Chrome. I'm going to hit on how you sign in. So we're going to go through the signing in again. But again, the importance of signing into Google Chrome is, <clears throat> excuse me, is your bookmarks and passwords will be saved. And what I mean by saved is they're going to be saved so that if you sign into another device, they're going to follow you to that device. So they save them, they um, categorize them. You also will have access to other Chrome extensions. Um, all your work tabs will be able to keep track of all your work tabs. So it's great to have those um, signing into Chrome because if you do have a personal account, you can have both of those accounts and toggle between them. Well, let's get to our demo. But first, I want to show you. Why, there you go. I want to show you the restore site. So I'm going to go to the home page and I'm going to take the link and I'm going to put it into chat for you. Just make sure you have it. But again, the resource site is chock full of information. There's a lot of information on here. I've added the recorded trainings from yesterday. I'll add today's recorded trainings as well. You have Learn by Tool. You also have Signing into Chrome. Any questions on Signing into Chrome? So this icon right here, what I would encourage you to do is sign into Chrome, but if you don't have the, sign, the, the Chrome icon, you can always just go Chrome.com and you can download that icon. You'll have the icon, you can sign into Chrome. Signing into Chrome is the best way to get to your G Suite product. But if you prefer, you can always go to Google.com. I encourage you to go to Chrome, sign into Chrome, get in your account information. Step-by-step -step guide here on how to do that, okay? That's on the resource site. Once you do that, once you sign in, and the other disclaimer is this. If you've already signed into G Suite, your password that you have and everything will work. You're, you don't have to sign in again. You're, you're already signed into it. Anybody who has not signed into G Suite will get an email before the end of the week that's going to have a new password that you're going to use Monday when you sign in. Okay? You can even test it on Friday if you want to just to sign in there. Nothing will be in there, but you could at least get into your account to know that it's going to work. But you're going to get that before Friday. So when you sign in on Monday, you're going to have a new password, the same LAC credentials, just a new password. When you do that and you're signed into Chrome, I'm going to go to a new tab because I want to show you what that looks like. It's just going to be looking like this, but over in the corner, remember how I said you're going to have a little picture, those are a picture of me, or you're going to have an icon with your, a little initial for your name. So I would have a C. It's going to be here. So you're going to be able to know that I'm in my account by knowing there's my information right here. So you're in your account, you're good to go. If once you've signed in, you don't have to sign in anymore because even if you log out, you're still going to be a part of it. All you got to do is sign in with your password and you're good to go. Everything's going to be there. Once you sign in, though, what I want you to do then is you're going to type in sites.lumaps.com and a communication will come out with all this information. The system, this site is not up and live yet. It's going to be on Monday. This is where you're going to go to your new company portal so that you can access from here all of your apps. Here's your Google Space at the bottom, but all of your apps, so mail, calendar, contacts. You can get to the resource site here. It's going to be more, there's going to be development of this. It's going to become the new company portal. But just to kick us off, we have the home page and we also have Going Google. Going Google is great. What I want you to do is start following it. And this is where you'll go to ask questions of your ambassadors and even the, and the team as you're going through the transition and questions you might have. Hey, I try to do this and it's not working. What do I need to do? Um, I'm not seeing all my emails. I'm not seeing all my labels. Whatever questions you're gonna have, you're gonna type in here. You're gonna hit on the plus sign over here and you're gonna be able to add. So title it, what's the description? putting the most information you can in here. And then you post it. It'll be posted. 
the ambassadors and the team will be looking for these, and as they're coming in, they'll be answering them. They might call you up directly. They might go on online here, and they might um, enter the, the answers in here. We're going to take this and also put it on the frequently asked portion of the resource site as well. So as we're getting questions, we're going to be building that as well. Going back to the home page, again, bookmarking this. So you can bookmark this, and you can bookmark the resource site, but also getting to it here. But this is where you're kind of your landing page to get to all of your applications, okay? Stopping for a minute, I just want to see everyone raise their hand and tell me that you're in a good place, you understand what we're talking about. If you don't, then I want to see a question in the, in the questions, and I'll go over something again. See a majority of the hands up, so just a couple are not. So if you do have any questions, let me know. But I'm feeling good that I'm going to move on. Okay. Coming down here, I'm going to go to Gmail first. And I can go there a couple different ways. I can click right here on the actual icon for mail. I can also click down here anywhere in my Gmail, go to my Gmail here, and that will bring me to my Gmail. And I can also come up here and I can go to the waffle and go to my mail. So a couple different ways that I can get there. I'm just going to click right here on the icon and it'll bring me to my mail account. What I want to start with today is I want to go into settings and there's a few settings I want to show you. Then we'll get into how these settings work. Okay. First one is going over to where settings is. So again, I'm going to go over here to my donut or my cogwheel. I'm going to click on settings and I'm going to go to my settings tab. So here I'm in my settings tab. You have your general, your labels, and you also have advanced. So I'm going to go to general, and I'm going to go to advanced. So I'm going to stick on general for now, and I'm going to scroll down. And remember, we talked about maximizing the page size for how many emails you want to see, setting up your undo send. Do you want to, you know, it defaults to five seconds. You want to set it at 30 seconds, whatever you're comfortable with. Coming down a little bit more. Right here, desktop notifications. Make sure that's turned on so you're going to get notifications of emails that are coming in. If you check it all the time and you don't need it on, then you can have mail notifications off. I like to have it on, like to know when I'm getting my emails coming in. Stars. This is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to click on one star. So initially, you're going to have one star showing. And again, stars are ways that you can um, enhance your emails so that you can have them stand out easier to find. Um, they're important emails. Um, I'm starring them maybe with a question mark or you know what, a check mark, whatever I want to do so that I can manage and, and work my inbox um, using the star capability. And so what I can do is I can use the one color. I can use four. So I can do tuple stars. I can do the checkbox and the exclamation point. I can also do all stars if I want. Or I can manage by the way I want to. So you know what, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. I'm just going to drag them down. I don't want them just dragging them down. I just want the check mark and the question mark, and then I'm going to leave all my other stars. So these are the ones that are in use. So again, starring, making that email stand out in your inbox. I'm not going to move it anywhere. I'm going to leave it in my inbox. I'm just going to star it. Maybe it's something I need to remind myself to go back and look at it. I'm going to put a little star on it. Once I'm done with it, I can take the star off. I'm going to show you what that looks like in the inbox in a minute. Again, your signature, make sure your signature has transferred over and looks good. And now I'm going to scroll up to the top. And I'm going to have your eyes go all the way over here to advanced. Advanced is an area that has some other applications that you can do within Gmail. Canned responses, auto advanced, I can do multiple inboxes. Oh, and keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to throw this out. I know I'm going to throw a curveball, but right off the bat, Remember how I said shift question mark brings up the keyboard shortcuts? If you are on a uh, Mac, anything with commands. So instead of shift, if you're on a Mac, you're going to do command and let's say compose, and it'll pull out that compose for you. But it's command on a Mac, shift on others. Just wanted to throw it out because I had a question yesterday, and I'm trying to get that out to everybody. But I'm going to check on canned responses. I want to enable canned responses. And canned responses are great because 
let's say I do have multiple signatures. I have my main signature that I have um, already populated, and now I need to create a couple other signatures because I reply to different people with different, um, for different means. I also want to make a canned response because I reply to an email over and over again with the same. So this, these emails keep coming in and I keep saying the same thing back to everybody. I'm gonna make a canned response for that. So these responses that over and over again, I'm replying to, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to create canned responses. I'm gonna come down here and click on save. You always wanna make sure you're saving as you're updating and changing things. And then I'm gonna go back to my inbox. First thing I wanna show you is the stars. Remember we created different colors for the stars. As you can see, I've got different colors here. And everyone's like, well, how do you get those? Because if you click on it, if I click on it, I can go through all the different colors. Just keep clicking on the star and it gives me all the different colors. So let's say I wanna put a check mark on this one. Um, this one I want to make a um, little nice little shade of pink it looks like. This one I'm gonna keep purple. Um, down here, you know what, I gotta remember this email. I'm gonna put a question mark on it because I got a question I need to ask Laura, but I can't do it right now, but I'm just gonna put a question mark on it so I can get to it later. That's how you use stars. Right here is important. So important emails are going to be important mainly because it was sent directly to you, but important is gonna come in. So if there's something important in it, you're gonna get that little important icon on it. So it's gonna give you that little, it's gonna highlight it with that important icon. I'm gonna come over here to stars label. Now that I've identified these emails with stars or I put a little um, a check mark on it or a question mark, I'm gonna to go to start and be able to find those instantly under that label. As I go through and let's say I don't need this one and I, I'm all good, I can just remove all the stars and we're good to go. If you need to send an important email, you can type important in the subject line so when they reply back to you, it will be important in your box. So it'll come back to you as important, it'll go to them as important. So just type important in the subject line and whatever else you need to have in there and it will be identified as important, leaving you and coming back to you. And then you'll have this little, the little like arrow going to the, to the right. So talking about starred, again, using your starred label when you star, now I wanna talk about canned responses because I turned that on. So now I wanna set up some canned responses. They're very easy to do. People love this canned responses. I'm gonna come over to Compose. And when I open up Compose, I'm gonna open up, actually use the two arrows and open it up even bigger so we can see the screen. To compose a canned response, I wanna make sure that I start with a clean slate because I'm composing a canned response within a new message. So that's how I'm gonna build these. So I click on compose, step one. Step two is I clear out and I empty my inbox or my new message. So it's a clean slate. And then from there, I start typing my message. So let's just say these are, I'm replying to somebody who's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in training and I'm always getting these questions in. Um, so thank you for your question. The team will, respond within, oop, I wanna get that respond within 24 hours. Um, if you do not get a response, let us know. Fix that, fix that spelling. And so that's just a basic canned response that I wanna populate and I wanna make. Mary, I'll get to your question in one second. Let me get through canned responses and we'll get to that. So I've created the canned response. So that's now my third step that I've done. So my step one was composing, click on compose, open up the new message, get rid of my signature. So that's step two, clear and slate. Now step three, I have built my canned response and it could be a signature. So whatever you wanna have in there, but it has to be only text. Now I come down to my little carrot over here and I click on carrot and then I come to my canned response. So step four, clicking on the skinny snowman. Step five, canned response. And step six, hmm, where do I wanna go? Oh, I wanna do new canned response because I wanna add a new canned response. Click on new canned response. And step seven is I want to now label this. Um, so question, reply, 
training, whatever you want to call it. You label it what you want to call it, so you'll know what it is. And then I click OK. So now I can pull this up whenever I need to reply to an email in regards to a training question. So I am going to discard this, and I'm going to even just pretend I'm replying to this email right here. I'm going to click on the email. I want to reply to this email, but I want to just insert my canned response. I click on reply, I come down here to the skinny snowman again, I go to canned response, and I come up here to insert, question replying training. There I've inserted it. Now I can edit this here if I want to. I can edit this if I need to, if I need to add something, but there's your basic canned response. I click send and we're off to the, we're off to the races and we're done. So that's another way that you can organize and make life quicker and easier for you by building canned responses. Again, canned responses are very easy. Compose, blank slate, create your canned response. Come down here to your little skinny snowman, more options, canned response, new, title it, and you're good to go. You can make as many as you need to. No limit on how many canned responses you need. I'm going to discard. I'm going to stop for a minute and just see how everyone's doing to this point. Everyone's good with me, on point, they're, they're feeling good, raise your hand. If everyone's at a good place right now. Got a lot of hands going up, great. Can we create an important label instead of putting important in the subject line? You can create an important label. So if you want a label and you want to title it important, you can do that. But what it will do is, if you're creating that label, then what it, you can either slide your email over there when it comes back, or, excuse me, if you put the important in the subject line, when it comes back to you, it'll have this icon on it, so you're going to know, and then you can slide it over to your label. So you can create a label that's important if you want to, and you can even create a filter, and I'll show you how to do that. So those emails will come back and go right into that label. Um, so there's different ways that you can have it work. So yes, you can create a label that's as important if you want to. The only label you can't create is archived. They don't like you to create archived labels. That's why you're not going to see an archived label. And I'll show, tell you a little bit about archived um, in a minute. All right. Let's see another question. Does there need to be a colon or dash or anything after we put important in the subject line? Nope, you can just put important in the subject line and you're good to go. Important, off to the races. That's going to be my new statement, off to the races. All right, so will the recipient see that as well? Well, they're going to see the important in the subject line. Yes, they're going to see the important in the subject line. So whatever you put in there, they're going to see that. It's just that it's going to read it when it comes back that it's an important email. Good questions. All right, talked about some settings, went over candy responses. Now let's talk about tasks. So we have tasks. Where are the tasks? Oh, the tasks are over here on the right-hand side. Tasks, keep, which is notes, and then calendar. So tasks are great. I've already started to set up some tasks that we have here. You can add a new task manually just by starting clicking on add a new task. Fill in what you want the title of that task to be. Um, let's say it's HR work. I click on the pencil. And then I start typing in what I want that task to be. I can also add a date, and I can add a date of when it's due, a due date for me. So let's say it's due on the 16th. I'm going to put a due date of the 15th. I can add subtasks if I want to. So HR work, um, new hire training. Uh, maybe we have um, new hire guides whatever they may be. So I'm starting to build new hire onboarding. I want to label this with that, new hire onboarding. So I'm building a task, and I've set a date on that task. I'll show you how that date will look on your calendar as well. So I'm starting to build tasks. I've got my task going on. I can come over here, and I can even set up a task using an email, meaning I'm going to take this team project update, okay? I'm going to check it, and I'm going to come up here. Sorry, I want to go back here, so I'm going to check it. I'm going to come up here, add two tasks. 
So I can initially take an email, add it to a task, and then build a task from that. So maybe there's some work I need to do. I just click on task. It now pulls it over here. There is the email, team project. I can then start typing away and add a title to this, and then I can build out my task the way I need to. I like tasks. It just helps me keep a little bit more organized. I have a bunch of tasks. But then as I'm working on those tasks, I can come in here and let's say I start working on them and I start, you know, new hire training, I got that done. I can check that and it will complete it. So now I know that that is done and completed. I'm going to X out of this because I don't want to see that. And right down here, it'll show you new hire training is completed. If I don't need it, I can just put it in the trash can and get rid of it. But as I do items on it, I can check them off. So that's how tasks work. I have a couple on here. I'm going to show you in calendar what they look like. I'm going to click on the X on here, and I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to highlight and show you. I want you to get in here and start playing with it. But keep, keep is like I call them my sticky notes. So I can put a title on here, but it's just a notepad basically. Um, you know, I can start putting information in here. Um, onboarding next week. So now I've started to make a keep note, so a note under my keep app. But if I click on the little arrow here, so tasks will stay, you can't go outside of that. There's not another app for that. But there is an app for keep. If I click on the little arrow, it brings me to my keep pad. So I've got all this great information here. Here's my, I started one earlier today. I've got a new note here. I can color this if I want to. I can collaborate and share with other teammates if I want to, giving them certain rights. So different things that I can do within my notepad. I can set up reminders. You know, so let's say I want to set up a reminder um, for tomorrow at 8 a.m. It's going to remind me tomorrow at 8 a.m. A little message will come into my inbox and remind me that I have some work I need to do on this. I can edit labels if I need to. I can edit things. I can pin this note. So I want this to be pinned up at the top and then I can have my other notes at the bottom. Get in here and start playing with it, but there's a lot of different things you can do in here. I can archive it. I can add labels. I can draw. I can draw cool little pictures. And then when I come back here, it adds it to that note for me. So it's just fun. Little, a little great way to keep you organized. So Google Keep. I'm going to go back to my inbox. I'm going to click on my X here. Again, here's your calendar. So now let's talk about labels and filtering and how we can make. So you know we want to make an important label. I'm going to make an important label. I'm going to click on more. So we're going to make a label. Let's do that first, and then we'll set up a filter. So I'm going to create a new label. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to important. I'm just going to call it important, and I'm going to create. <gasps> Sorry, you can't create a label named important. It's a reserved system label. Please try another name. I knew that, but I wanted to show you that. So you can't create important. And the reason you can't is because Google recognizes emails as important. Now, I can do, you know, um, maybe you want to, instead of important, maybe you want to be, um, you know, um, emails I need to review. You can call it that. Now I can create that label. So important is only recognized when Again, it's going to be in your box and it's going to call it out because it's something that Google already uses. So you can't make a label for important. But I wanted to I wanted to show you guys that so you could see it in action. But I did do emails that I need to review. So let's say I want to do I want to create that. I want to color code it. I'm going to come over here to labels and I'm going to go I'm going to make it green. Nah, I want to make it a different color cuz I want it something that's different than what I already have. We'll do blue. What I also want to do is I want to show you I'm going to edit this. And I want to show you something. If you want a label to be at the top of your list, because your list is going to be alphabetical order. So if you want, let's say you have like 30 labels, and there's a label at the bottom, and it starts with Z, and you want it to be at the top of your list, just put an asterisk in the beginning of it, and it will move it to the top of your list. 
just like I have my training team here. So if you want to move your labels around, you can organize them in that fashion if you want to. So I wanted to point that out. So that emails that need review. So let's say there are some emails that need review and they come in from you know, SADA training. So let's say this SADA training account are emails that I, I want when they come in, I wanna make sure that I'm reviewing them and, and there's no issues. So let's see who this is from. This is from SADA training. Um, we'll do, I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna search. So I'm gonna come up to the top here in the little carrot and I'm gonna put in from, who's it coming from? And I'm gonna search. And I found a few emails that are coming in that are important to me, that I need to work on. So as these emails come in, I wanna create a filter so I know when they come in, they go to this label, and then I can go right into this label and I can work with them. If I click on the little carrot here, and I create a filter. So you can do this in so many different ways. You can be creative, you can do has the words, you can have the subject line, so you know emails maybe come in from a client with a certain sub subject line, you wanna create a label for that. Um, there's so many different ways you can create labels. So I'm going to create, sorry, create a filter. I am going to have these emails skip my inbox. So they're going to go right to my label. I'm going to select my label, emails that I need to review. And I'm going to know that I have five or three that are right there now that I want to move over. So it's going to pull everything that's already there in my inbox and it's just going to move it over to my label. I'm going to create my filter. So now what it's done is it's moved under emails I need to review, those three emails. Now moving forward, anything that comes in from that um, email will go right into that label. And then I will come right in here and I know I need to work them. And then as I work them, I can do what I need to do with them. So that's how you create filters. Selecting how you want the filter to look, you know, maybe has the words, training, Again, that would be all my emails because they all have training in them somewhere. Again, it's searching everywhere in the email. So that's why you're finding all my emails with training. It's in the subject line. It could be in the body. It could be in an um, attachment. It could be anywhere within there. It could be in the email address. But that is how you create labels, create filters, and you can also organize your labels. So I'm going to stop and see if there's any questions. I'm going to lower all hands. First, I'm gonna say any questions, but secondly, I'm gonna ask, are we good where we're at right now? How are we feeling? Raise your hand if you're feeling good. Good, good, good. All right. I like seeing all those hands going up. Now let's talk about, let me go to calendars. I'm gonna go, I mean, I'm not calendars, contacts first. Let's go to contacts. I wanna show you contacts how you can edit contacts, how you can work with contacts a little bit more. Take a few minutes on contacts. So again, different ways you can get there. I can go right to my waffle. I can go to contacts. I can type contacts.google.com. So I'm gonna to go to my contacts. So again, this is your contacts. You can get there through your apps or when you're in composing, if you click on the two, again, that brought to you contacts as well. This is where you're gonna to wanna to go to edit. So let's say, you know, I want to edit my team name. I can edit my name if I want to. I want to change this name to Team um, Team Sada. I'm going to train that, change that there. I've got Team HR. Let's say I want to change this one. I actually named it wrong. I want this one to Team Team LAC. I can start updating. I can open up and look at all of the contacts are in here. I can start editing if I want to. So if I come over here to the right-hand side, I can delete, I can remove from this label, I can add to another label if I want to, so I can put them all in all three if I need to. That individual is now going to be in all three of my labels. And you'll see labels listed here. Here's their email address. Here's the name of the person, and I have six in my HR label. Right down here, I can do settings again, first, last name, if I wanna change the order, how I want to look at them. I can do first name first, last name first. I can come up here to the directory. I can see all the directory if I want to, and I can just be like, you know what, I wanna add somebody to my, I found the person, I can search. 
let's say I found, and now I want to add to one of my labels. I can find the person, and I can just add them to one of my labels. So now they're added to one of my labels. So if I come over to my Team HR, I have now added them to my label. I can create a new label if I want to. Team marketing. Whatever you want it to be. And then from here, so I've created my team marketing, I can even start searching names. You know, so I can start adding people to this this one if I want to, team marketing. Now I've added, I've started to bring people into. So that's how you can work with your contacts to create your own labels. Now again, they will migrate over. You want to check them just to make sure. So you'll come into contacts and see what has migrated over. But if you want to make new, very easy to do. Let me look at Roberta. What is she asking? Let me go to the question. So we got, can you search for number sequences in addition to words? Back in Gmail, let me go back to Gmail quick. Search number sequences. So I'm thinking, like, if you're looking for what, maybe a phone number? Is that what you're thinking? What are you thinking of for number sequences? Give me a little bit more, and then I want to see if I can search that. So a ticket number. Um, you probably can, because you can search. As I go in here, my little carrot has the words. I could, you could probably put in numbers as well. I don't know if I have anything with numbers in it, but let's see. Yeah, I don't have anything with numbers. But test it out. I believe you're going to be able to search that way because if it has the words, it's going to be looking for anything within that email. So I'm going to take words and I'm going to make that into numbers as well. So if you do like a ticket number, you know, so number and then whatever the ticket number is, you should be able to find that email. I don't have anything I can test it on, but I'm, I'm going to go with yes. But I want you to, you know, do a test on that and see if that's going to work. Great question. Going to go back to contacts. Again, you can manipulate and add and delete whatever you need. But again, I want you to check on Monday when you get your contacts. When you come in and log in, go to your contacts app and just see that all the contacts have migrated over. Day one, they might not have. Maybe it might take to day two. But you're going to be getting all your contacts migrating over as well. I'm going to X out of that, go back to my Gmail. Now I want to go to my calendar. Again, a couple different ways I can get there. I can even go back to my portal and I can go to calendar from here. I can even go to my contacts from here. So if I click on calendar, it will bring me to my calendar right from the portal. Okay? So now you're in your calendar. I know we went over a lot of this yesterday. A couple things again, my calendar, other calendar, my calendar. I have permissions to activate and, and, and do things in, meaning I can change meetings, I can add meetings based on the permissions I was given. Other calendars, no permissions given. Really, I just have viewable rights to those calendars. I can view them by searching them under add a coworker's calendar. Now, a teammate can give you access to their calendar. They have to give you access, and then you will get a communication and an email that will say that. But some of the things I want to show you in here, I want to go to settings quick, and I want to show you a couple settings first. We talked about a little bit yesterday, but I want to hit on them again, and then I'll come back to the calendar and show you some, show you some of the other features. Settings, so the cogwheel, the donut, general settings. One of the things, again, making sure your time zone is correct. Also make sure your desktop notifications is on. But this is the one right here, working. Enabling your working hours. And what I like about this, and I, I talked about it yesterday, was if somebody tries to set up a meeting that is outside of your working hours, they'll get a pop-up that will say, hey, this is outside of you know, Christopher's working hours. Maybe you want to change the meeting, or you can set up the meeting, but let them you know, understand this is outside of their working hours. They might not be able to attend. And again, you can change whatever your working hours are. It's the same every day, just copy the time to all. If you do work on a weekends, you can put that in there as well. But put in your working hours. And you can learn more about working hours right here. So you're going to see that a lot throughout Gmail too. It'll say learn more about. All you got to do is click on it and it'll bring you to a page where you can learn more about working hours. 
but I love them. Easily set those up, and that's going to help people manage how they're using your time and they're using it correctly. So that's working hours. I'm going to come back out of here and I'm going to go back to the calendar. And some of the things I want to show you are I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. I talked about my calendars and other calendars. Again, you can search any colleague. And I can pull up and find their calendar, and I can start looking at it. Remember, under settings, there's two areas under settings where you want to set those privacy settings up, where I want LAC viewable only to see busy, and then I also want to share my calendar. So that's under your, your settings. So remember that, the skinny snowman. Go to settings and sharing, and right down here, right here, access permissions, and then share with specific people. Access permissions is for your busy. That's when somebody can search your calendar. This is I want to give somebody permission to access my calendar. Just wanted to show you that quick. So coming back here, a couple of things that I want to show you are what you can do from an invite that you have already created, how you can easily work with that. So again, I can right click on it and I can change how I'm going to be going to this meeting. I can remove it. I can change the color of it if I want to. I want to give it a different shade of you know, color so that it stands out a little bit more. Maybe there's certain meetings I want to give those colors to. I can also click on that and open it up, and now I get another window. This window I can remove from calendar, email guests. So let's say I want to email guests an update. I can do that right from here. Just click on it, email my guests what's going on. They're going to get event information also included within that email. I can click on the little skinny snowman. I can print. I can duplicate. So I could take this whole entire meeting that I set up, and I can duplicate it. And all I got to do is, let's say it's the same exact meeting, just, you know, it's, maybe it's a, a, a quarterly meeting. The same people go to it. Everything's the same. I just click on duplicate. I change the date and the, the change the time if it's going to change. Maybe update a few things, but basically everything's the same. I'm off to the races. I hit save and we're good to go. So very easy to duplicate a meeting. Skinny Snowman again. I can publish it, report spam if there's anything going on. I don't really ever hit on those. Then coming down here easily access this meeting. So let's say I'm using Meet because it's a virtual meeting. I just click on Hangout Meet and we're good to go. Click on that and what it does is it opens it up and I'm ready to go. Camera's blocked because I'm using it now. But that's as easy as getting into it. Oops. Just wanna make sure I'm still there. Good, all right, I thought maybe I disconnected myself. So that's also getting into quickly into your meeting. Over here, I can copy reference link if I need to. So that's the reference, reference link to your Hangouts meeting. So if I need to send it to somebody, right down here, I can copy guests. So I can copy all the emails, guests that are going to be on there. And if I want to send them a separate email, I just copy guests to my clipboard, paste that into an email, and I send it, and I'm on my way. So a lot of different things I can do right from here. I can propose a new time if I want to. I can even add a note if I want to. So many different things I can do within my calendar. I don't want to, you don't want to ever forward invites because if you do, the person that you're forwarding it to might not get updates. You just want to make sure if you have to add people to a meeting, just open up the meeting and add them as a guest. That's the easiest way to get them on to the meeting. Because if I add somebody to the meeting, so let's say I'm adding somebody here, I go to save. If I do send, it'll send that to them. So we're off to the races, we're good to go. I'm gonna undo and undo done that. So I'm going to actually open this back up and I'm going to remove and edit this. I want to open that up. I'm gonna to have to work on that. I gotta get. I gotta get rid of them. I'm gonna go into this one because I should. Why don't I have my systems being finicky today? 
Usually I should have a little X right next to them. I'm going to go into edit because I should have a little X right next to them so I can remove them. But I don't see that. So I'm going to um, play with that a little bit, but I wanted to show you how to do that. But there's usually a little X I can remove somebody. So that's just adding. Again, I wanted to just stress the importance of not forwarding. You don't want to forward. You don't want to ever forward. It's more of that in quotes. You want to just add people to your meeting invite as a new guest. Duplicating events, we hit on that. Out of office, that's one thing I want to show you, out of office. So you're going to be out of office on Friday. Great. We're going to be taking some time off. Two ways you can set this up. I can drag and say when I'm going to be out of the office. And I can be like PTO. Now, if you notice, decline because I'm out of the office. New and existing meetings during this time will be automatically declined. Yep, automatically declined. So you don't have to worry about it. Not everyone likes that feature. So you can do, I usually like to set this up if it's going to be like a week. Like I'm going to be out of the office for a week and I'm, ex I'm putting on my calendar, you know, a month in advance. So if anybody tries to set up something up, it's going to be declined and they're going to see that I'm out of the office. So you can leave that on if you want to. I don't like to use that. I'm going to discard it. I like to set up if I'm going to be out of the office for a day or maybe a couple days, all I do is I come in and I set up a new meeting invite. And I just say PTO, and I set that I'm going to be out of the office, let's say, for, from the 9th to the 12th. But all I'm going to do is I put the time in there from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And then I save. Oops. I think I did that wrong. Hold on. I think I did it wrong. I'll go back to the 9th and just do the 9th, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So now it's going to show throughout the whole day that I'm out, but meeting invites will stay. They're not going to go away. They're not going to be declined. So let's say you might be on PTO, but there's times I've had, I've called into a meeting. Yeah, I'm on PTO. I'm just at home. There's a meeting. I want to attend it. I don't want to decline it. I'm going to call into it. So you don't have to worry about that happening to any of your meetings. So there's two ways you can do it. You can do out of office or you can do setting up a meeting invite. I want to go to certain days because remember we set up some reminders, didn't we? I'm going to go to the 21st. Oh, there's the team project. So again, I set up a task for my team project for the 21st. It is now showing on my calendar. I can right click on it. I can complete it. I can delete it if I want to. I also have a reminder that I set up, enter time. Very easy to set up reminders. Just click, set up reminder and whatever that reminder is going to be. I can set up weekly, I can, however I want that reminder to show on my calendar. I'm going to hit X on that. If you don't have reminder and task checked, you will not see them on your calendar. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. You have to have tasks and reminder checked, sorry, to show them on your calendar. If you notice it went away as soon as I took off reminder. So make sure they're checked. And if I don't have reminder checked over here, and I go to try to set up a reminder, it's not gonna let me set up a reminder either. So remember, reminder and checked, you wanna have, you wanna have them checked so you can see them on your calendar. Just going over my list, I wanna make sure I'm hitting everything. I think I got everything. Oh, one thing I wanna show you, creating your own calendar. So you can create your own calendar. You can create a team calendar. You can create a PTO calendar, whatever you want. You can create your own calendar. If you click on the plus, it gives you options. New calendar, browse resources, browse calendars of interest. And those would be like maybe birthday or you know holiday calendars, things like that, that are already populated in G Suite. But if I want a new calendar, I just click on new calendar and I start populating my new calendar. Team. PTO, calendar, you want to keep track of the team so we all know where we're going to be, what's going on. You can make your own team PTO calendar if you want. Create the calendar. I'm going to create this calendar, and it will now showcase in a minute in my list of my calendars. And then the same settings, the same way that I would use my own calendar, I'm going to use the PTO calendar. But I just give permissions to everybody on my team to access it and manage it. Hit the back arrow, and I come down here, and here's my team calendar. Again, I just go with the skinny snowman. 
I go to settings and I go through and update settings as I need to. I give permission to people on my team, may, you know, make changes and manage sharing, whatever I want, and now they can be in there and they can start using that so we can stay more organized. Hitting the back arrow, I'm gonna stop. We've gone over a lot of information. How are we doing? What questions do we have? So if any questions, type those in. Raise your hand, again, if you're feeling good about where we're at, feeling good with the information that we've gone over with Gmail, calendar, contacts. All right. And I see some that don't, you know, if I don't see a hand up, to me, that's just saying I'm still processing. I'm still processing what you gave me, and that's fair. I want you to just feel like you, you have a good foundation to get going on Monday. There's a lot more. I mean, we can't show you everything. We want to show you the, the top level so that you can really start using it. And then you're going to start finding things out as you get in there as well. But any questions at all on Gmail, Calendar? Tomorrow we go into Drive, so tomorrow is Drive. So we're talking about collaborating with documents, how that works. How would you access Gmail through your phone? You will download the Gmail app. So there's a Gmail and there's also a calendar app. You would download that onto your phone and then you would just log in with your credentials for work, meaning your work email and your password, and then you will access. So once you sign into Chrome, and you get everything going, you, you've like activated your, your account, you can then sign into Gmail on your phone using the Gmail app and the calendar app. Good question. Any other questions? Again, resource site, valuable. If you think there's anything else we should add to it, let Laura know so we can update that. I should know this. Will our email addresses change? Nope, they will not change, Roberta. That's a great question. Not a, that's a good question. They will not change. The same email addresses. So the same email, it's just your password will change, meaning you'll get an email by Friday with a new password that you will use to log in on Monday. If you've already been in G Suite already and logged in, then you're good. Your password is what your password is. But if you have not logged in yet, you will get that new password. So really good question, Roberta. And again, signing into Chrome. So on the resource site, please check it out. Just go here, play around, check out the different tabs, what's on here. Signing into Chrome, it's on here. Just kind of check it out, go through the instructions. This is the icon for the Chrome icon. You can download Chrome to your laptop. Very easy to do, you just chrome.com. You can download it, you'll have the icon on there, you wanna pin it, you're, good to, you're, you're off to the races, good to go. And then you can log in from there. And then once you're logged in, again, lumapssites.lumaps.com, that's where you're gonna go, so there'll be an email with that information as well. But that's where you're gonna go as kind of your landing page to go to all of your apps. And that's also under what will happen on Go Live Day. That's also under here as well. Okay, so some great information on the resource site. Um, if I accept an invite and then later decline it, does it automatically send it to everyone or just the organizer? Just the organizer. So the organizer will see that you've declined that. In, that um, just going to go to the organizer. They're going to see that you declined it. It's going to go there. Now, again, it's not going to remove it from your calendar. It's still going to be on there just with a line through it. So your strike through on your calendar. So if I decline... It'll just decline this one and it'll give me a strike through. And it's going to send the organizer that I've declined and they know that I've declined it. Good question. Any other questions? All right, if no questions and everyone's feeling good, I'm going to give you five minutes back. But again, we recorded the session. It will be uploaded to the resource site. Again, thank you for your time today. Look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's session or even the session. We have one more session this afternoon. So if you want to come on back, I'll be here.
doing the same show again. So have a great day. And we'll chat soon. Thanks. Bye, Ivan. Bye, James.